Conway. Right. Senator O'Donnell, you have uh, six minutes. Alas, Carly, was going to make it. Tanis, you have a Tanis, you very understandably, um, you're facing many inquiries arising from the manner uh, in which you respond to questions that you've been asked about this very serious situation in relation uh, to what you knew about the denigration of whistleblower Sergeant McCabe. And no one's calling into question, Senator Conway, anything else. And effectively, Tanis, your failure to answer satisfactorily the questions that have been asked, have merely been asked, is undermining your judgment, competence, and credibility. You have evidently failed to convince the public that you can't remember if you read the email or not. And it is, of course, inconceivable that you did not know in May 2014 of the malicious criminal complaint against Sergeant McCabe. Tanisha, did your department, uh, departmental officials brief you about Sergeant McCabe, or indeed were you aware of the documents the then Taoiseach was given by Micheál Martin regarding allegations against Sergeant McCabe? If not, why not? And the email, which you say you can't remember reading, in fact refers to the malicious complaint and its use as part of Noreen O'Sullivan, the Garda Commissioner's legal strategy to denigrate the sergeant, despite these allegations having been disproven and not pursued <coughs> by the DPP. On mature reflection, Tanisha, do you recall any clearer now that you did, in fact, read the email? You said, uh, Tanisha, in your opening remarks that actions speak louder than words. So let's reflect on some of your actions. Despite having this information, despite having read this email and knowing what has been pursued by Garda uh, Commissioner O'Sullivan's legal team, what did you do? What were your actions? Tanish, you told the Taoiseach that you did not know about the Commissioner's malicious legal strategy to undermine Sergeant McKay before the cross-examination of the Sergeant by the Commission on May 18, 2015. Yet the sensational email sent to you, in which you conveniently said you can't remember reading, is dated May the 15th, three days before the cross-examination. So you tell us again in your opening remarks of everything that you have done in your tenure as Minister for whistleblowers, but upon reflection, upon mature reflection, upon looking at the evidential facts put before us, what did you do for whistleblowers in this particular instance? So again, Tanis, on mature reflection, would you now like to revisit your memory while you have the opportunity here in the Senate and correct these contradictory accounts on the floor of this House. I am too, uh, uh, Tanisha, also concerned to ask why it took over three years, as all our colleagues have asked, before this sensational email was uncovered. And perhaps that is the reason, Victor, uh, who is no longer here, I don't think, is the reason why we find ourselves here tonight, because it took those three years before that email was uncovered. So on his appointment, Tanisha, Mr Justice O'Neill, we are told, was provided with all of the relevant documentation. And I presume that the Charlton Tribunal, as was referred to, was provided with all the relevant documentation as well. Yet this elusive email does not surface with Justice O'Neill or with the Charlton Tribunal. Why did the sensational email not surface on both of these occasions? Was the email in all of the relevant documentation? And if not, why not? If it was, why did it lie dormant and its importance overlooked until now? Can you answer the following questions uh, for me, Tanisha, uh, in conclusion? Who first informed the Taoiseach about the email? Was it you who informed the Taoiseach? And when did the current Minister for Justice find out about the email as well?